At the dawn of the third millennium, humanity wakes up, stretching its limbs and rubbing its eyes. Remnants of some awful nightmares are still drifting across its mind. There was something with barbed wire and huge mushroom clouds. Oh well, it was just a bad dream. Going to the bathroom, humanity washes its face, examines its wrinkle in the mirror, makes a cup of coffee and opens the diary. Let's see what's on the agenda today. For thousands of years, the answer to this question remained unchanged. The same three problems preoccupied the human of 20th century China, of medieval India, and ancient Egypt. Famine, plague, and war were always at the top of the list. For generation after generation, humanity had prayed to every god, angel, and saint and have invented countless tools, institutions, and social systems, but they continue to die in their millions from starvation, epidemic, and violence. Many thinkers and prophets concluded that famine, plague, and war must be an integral part of God's cosmic plan or of our imperfect nature and nothing short of the end of time would free us from them. Yet at the turn of the third millennium, humanity wakes up to an amazing realization. Many people really think about it, but in the last few decades, we have managed to reign in a famine, plague, and war. Of course, these problems have not been completely solved, but they have been transformed from incomprehensible and uncontrollable forces of nature into manageable challenges. We don't need to pray to any god or saint to rescue us from them. We know quite well what needs to be done in order to prevent famine, plague, and war, and we usually succeed in doing it. True, there, were, there are still notable failures, but when faced with such failures, we no longer shrug our shoulders and say, well, that's the way things work in our imperfect world, our guts will be done, rather, when famine, plague, or war break out of our control. We feel that somebody must have screwed up. We set up a commission of inquiry and promise ourselves that next time we will do better. And it actually works. Such calamities indeed happen less and less often. For the first time in the history, more people die today from eating too much than from eating too little. More people die from old age than from infectious disease and more people commit suicide than are killed by soldiers, terrorists and criminals combined. In the early 21st century, the average human is far more likely to die from binging at McDonald's than from drought, Ebola or Al-Qaeda attack. Hence, even though presidents, CEOs and generals still have their daily schedules full of economic crises and military conflicts, on the cosmic scale of history, humankind can lift its eyes off and start looking towards new horizons. If we are indeed bringing famine, plague and war under control, what will replace them at the top of human agenda? Like firefighters in a world without fire. So humankind in 21st century needs to ask itself an unprecedented question. What are we going to do with ourselves in a healthy, prosperous, harmonious world, what will demand our attention and ingenuity? This question becomes doubly urgent given the immense new powers 
that biotechnology and information technology are providing us with what will we do with our the power 